Please be seated. Here we are traveling, of course, through the season of Lent. Lent being a time of reflection and prayer and preparation. Today, I would ask you to keep in the back of your mind three questions and give consideration to these questions as not only the sermon unfolds, but also the service. Question number one, what is a Christian? What is a Christian? Question two, what is a calling? And question three, what is ministry? In our gospel today, Jesus talks about these questions. He talks about what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be called, and what it means to give ourselves in ministry. He talks about what it looks like. In particular, he talks about what it demands of us. And also, I think, he talks about what it gives us. He talked about his life. He talked about a ministry of service and sacrifice that would lead him all the way to the cross. And even beyond the cross. And he reminds his followers that if you follow in my footsteps, this calling, this ministry will be sacrificial. He doesn't talk about his own glory. He doesn't talk about his own power. He doesn't talk about riches. He doesn't talk about reward. And he doesn't talk about recognition. Instead, he talks about faithful ministry. He talks about a life of service that is intensely demanding. A ministry that many people will reject because it's hard. And yet he also reminds his followers that through this ministry, some people will catch a glimpse of heaven. He talks about his pain, he talks about his suffering as their teacher and their leader. And yet he also, I think, talks about a suffering that will help some people to see the glory and the love of God. And for the disciples, this is a very challenging message because they're called to follow in their master's footsteps. Some feel disturbed by this. Peter, in particular, doesn't want to hear this message. And that's reasonable. Peter was hoping for a different message, a different outcome. Perhaps he was hoping for a ministry that would be rewarded with glory and honour. And of course, he loved Jesus. He didn't want to see his teacher, his friend, suffer. He doesn't want to see his Lord rejected and killed. There's that too. So Peter wasn't ready for this message. He wasn't ready to carry the words of Jesus in his heart. He was still holding on to something else. So in our reading today, in our gospel, we are shown a ministry that is not very attractive. It doesn't appear to have many rewards at face value. A ministry that lies beyond our hopes and our dreams and our expectations and our egos. We are shown a Messiah who challenges us and suffers with us. Who calls us to question our very comfortable faith. A faith that can be at times a little bit self-serving. Ministry is an act of self-emptying because it's not really about us. 
I'm reminded of some words written by Thomas Merton, who lived as a Trappist monk in the 1940s and the 1950s. In his life, he encouraged more dialogue between the great faith traditions of the world. He reminds us that love is what we hold in common, regardless of our faith tradition. Love, he reminds us, is our true destiny. So in the words of Merton, we do not find meaning in life by ourselves, alone. We find it with one another. We do not discover the secret of our lives by study and calculation alone. The meaning of our life is a secret that is revealed to us by love, by the one we love. And if this love is unreal, the secret will never be found. We will never be fully real until we let ourselves fall in love, either with another human being or with God. Consider the words of Psalm 51, which talk about this longing to be changed and transformed by love, to become more real. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a right spirit within me. So as we continue our journey through Lent, we pause to give consideration to those three questions. What is a Christian? What is a calling? And what is ministry? Are we like the people who were drawn to Jesus, the followers of Christ who were looking for a prophet to lead them and liberate them? Are we like the disciples who were looking for a teacher that would lead them into a comfortable ministry? A ministry without hardship and pain, well, not too much of it. A ministry without too much suffering. Are we like Peter? who rebuked Jesus for talking about his suffering and his death. Are we ready to accept this suffering Lord? Are we ready to follow all the way to the foot of the cross as an act of love and longing? Are we ready to pick up our cross and follow As Christians, we will struggle with this calling. I know I do every week. I've been ordained for 19 years now, six years of full-time training before that, years of lay ministry before that. I struggle with this every week. But this is the purpose of Lent. This is the purpose of our time in, in the wilderness, to redirect and give ourselves to God again. Beyond our self-interest, beyond our limited understanding of ministry, we too can catch a glimpse of the true Jesus. If we are daring, if we are led by this love, those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for the sake of the gospel, we'll save it. Today, we are reminded that Jesus is our suffering Messiah, the one who calls us to follow, a God of love and compassion and sacrifice, our compass when we lose sight of this calling, our guide when we stray from the path, and we will. So in Christ, we see more than just a liberator. We see the freedom to love and serve God and each other. In the words of our poet, 
God of all times and places, you open for us the path to eternal life. Grant that being born of water and the spirit, we may joyfully serve you in newness of life and faithfully walk in your holy ways. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray for the world and for the church and thank God for God's goodness.